Hey what's up, this is Caleb Ward with VFX City and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this cool eclipse scene in After Effects. Now, before we get going, I want to encourage you to go download the free project file over on my website at VFX City. All right, so to create this effect, I'm gonna to go to File, New, Project. And we won't save this. So first things first, let's create a new composition. Go to Composition, New Composition, and we're gonna make this a 24 frames per second HD composition, and it can be five seconds long, and hit OK. And I'm gonna to toggle the transparency here so it's black, and we're gonna create a new solid, hit Command Y. And this new solid is going to be white. So just change it white and we'll call this moon and hit OK. And right now we have just a simple white solid, but we're going to go to our eclipse tool here and just create a circle. And I'm holding down shift to make a perfect circle. And let's turn on our proportional grid and find out where the center of our composition is. So right about here. And you can turn off the grid. Okay, so with our mask selected down here, we're going to feather out the edges to where we just get this kind of feathered out uh, circle here. And I'm going to duplicate this circle. And this duplicated layer, I'm going to call sun. And we can go ahead and scale down the sun. And I'm going to move it over here to where we can see it. So essentially for our effect, we want the sun to pass behind the moon and pop up on the other side. So I'm gonna set a keyframe at the very beginning for right about here for the sun. Just hit P for position, set a keyframe, scrub to the very end of your composition and just drag the sun to the other side. So now we have this simple shape that pops up on the other side. So go ahead and select both of these layers. Hit Shift Command C for pre-compose and we're gonna call this Eclipse base and hit OK. And now let's go ahead and name our comp one here. Let's call it final comp just so we're all on the same page. And let's double click into this eclipse base composition and copy the moon layer and go ahead and paste it into the final comp here. So uh, right now it is white, but we actually want to change the color. So we're going to go to layer solid settings and we're going to change the look to black. In fact, you could go in here and change the name to Black Moon and hit OK. And hit F for feather and set the feathering to zero. So now we basically have just this black circle on top of our soft circles. All right, so now it's time to make the magic happen. So we're gonna go to Layer New Adjustment Layer and I'm gonna go to the Levels effect in our effects browser and I'm gonna drag it over. And instead of using the RGB, which uh, you'll use pretty much 90% of the time when you're using levels, we're gonna go to the alpha channel. And go ahead and grab the little arm here and drag it over. And let's grab this arm and kind of drag it inwards. So basically we want to make kind of a soft edge around our moon. And then this uh, sun over here can be a little more dense. And so, as you can see, the uh, the black solid is not quite big enough. We actually want it to just basically buddy up right next to the part where it goes from bright white to soft. So we're gonna go ahead and hit S for scale with the black moon selected and just go ahead and scale it up to right about there. So as you can see, this is just kind of creating a cool blending effect right along the edges. So I'm gonna go to our effects browser one more time and I'm gonna type in glow. We're gonna apply glow to the adjustment layer. And you can go ahead and turn up the radius of the glow and turn up the intensity as well. We can turn it up to about two. Just go in here, turn up the radius. And instead of original colors, we're gonna set this to AB colors. And instead of color B being black, we're gonna change it to just kind of a blue right about here. So you can see there's a little more blue along the edge, kind of the edge of the frame where the circle is connecting with the larger moon. And that's exactly what we want. So one thing you may notice by our eclipse effect here is that it blends along the edges, but 
There's no outline along the moon that's kind of emphasizing that this light is actually really bright. And so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our black moon layer. And I'm gonna hit Shift Command Y to go to solid settings. Remember earlier we went to layer solid settings. So I just went to solid settings again and we're gonna call this moon reflection. And I'm gonna set the color to white. Hit OK and OK. So right now it just looks like one big white composition. But if you go to your settings here under uh, mask and then mask one and duplicate mask one and set the second mask to subtract, you'll now see that this moon reflection has basically disappeared. But the cool thing is if we have mask two selected down here, we can kind of grab the edges here to make it look like the light is kind of bleeding off over the edge. So I'm going to scrub forward here and let's go ahead and determine a good time for the, the edge to kind of pop up. So I think right about here is where it'd be good to go ahead and start with a keyframe. So I'm gonna go into our menu here under mask two and set a keyframe for the mask path. And we'll move forward to right about here where it should probably be at its brightest. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this mask. I'm holding down shift to make sure it moves perfectly left and right. And we'll set a keyframe there automatically. And let's move forward to right about here. And then we'll just go ahead and copy this original keyframe, the keyframe on the left, and paste it. So now we have, if we scrub through, kind of the reflection comes on and it goes off. And now let's go ahead and scrub to the end here. And we wanna do basically the same thing. So let's go to right about here and set a keyframe for the mask to path. Move forward to right about here. And we can go ahead and move it to the right, maybe to right about there and move forward again till the sun is off the moon there and go ahead and just copy this keyframe here, Command C and Command V for paste. So now we have basically the reflection pops up and goes off and then it pops up and then goes off, cool. All right, so one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that the effect is really linear. So you can see that as the reflection pops up, it just kind of like moves off and it doesn't look very organic at all. So what I'm gonna do is select one of the keyframes and hit the graph editor button. Excellent. So once you're inside the graph editor, go ahead and grab the middle keyframe here and just drag it all the way down to zero here. And go ahead and just drag it all the way down to zero and just kind of smooth it out to where we create kind of this M shape here. And let's do the same over here. Just grab the middle keyframe and create just kind of a soft M shape right about there. And let's go ahead and play this back now. Cool, so as you can see, this now more smoothly kind of pops up that reflection there at the end. All right, so now go ahead and select all of your layers, hit Shift Command C to pre-compose, move all attributes to the new composition, and we'll call this Eclipse, and hit OK. So now it's time to actually go in and stylize everything. So hit Command Y, and we're gonna create a new solid. We'll make it comp size, and we'll call this solid BG for background, and go ahead and set it to black. Hit OK and OK and go ahead and drag the background below the Eclipse. So let's create another solid hit, Command Y, and we're gonna call this solid stars, and go to the color, change it to white, hit OK, and OK. Now go to the Effects and Presets browser and type in star. We're just gonna use the starburst effect, and go ahead and drag it onto the stars layer. So go ahead and go to size and scale it down to right about, uh, we'll say 20, and then go to speed and set it to zero. So once you set speed to zero, these stars are just gonna remain completely still in the sky. And that looks good. And let's go ahead and drop the stars below the eclipse. So let's now make a lens flare to make the scene look a little more realistic. Hit command Y and we'll call this lens flare and change the color to black. Hit OK and OK. So go ahead and drag the lens flare onto your layer and change the lens type to 105 millimeter prime and then go to mode and we'll change it to add. So let's go ahead and scrub to the very beginning of the composition 
and we're going to make sure our lens flare is right over the sun. Go ahead and set a keyframe for the flare center, move to the very end, and then move the flare center again right in line with the sun. So now it just simply follows that sun throughout the scene. But obviously we don't want the lens flare to pop up while the sun is behind the moon. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for right about here for the brightness and we'll go ahead and move the keyframe down to where it's the brightness is about, oh, we'll do 75. And then whenever the sun goes behind the moon, we'll change the brightness down to zero. And then let's move forward to right about here. And we're gonna set another keyframe. Let's go back into our normal timeline and hit U to see the keyframes here. And go ahead and copy this keyframe brightness of zero and paste it right here. And then move forward a few frames to right about there. And we can go ahead and just copy this keyframe. Remember this keyframe has a keyframe value of 75. We'll just go ahead and paste it right there. So now, so now the lens flare is bright and it fades out when the sun goes behind the moon and it gets brighter again when it's at, at the other side. Perfect. So let's throw in a tritone effect and drop it onto our lens flare. And instead of orange, we're just gonna do just a blue right about there and hit okay. Cool, so another thing I can see that we're gonna wanna do is add in a little texture to our scene. We, we don't want the stars just to be perfect the way they are. We actually want there to be a little dust, basically maybe simulate like dust from the Milky Way or some sort of other kind of celestial body that's in the sky. So to do that, hit Command Y and we'll call this dust and hit OK. And let's go to our effects browser. We're gonna go to the effects browser and type in turbulent noise and drop it onto our solid here and go ahead and turn up the contrast. And then we're gonna set the transfer mode to screen and I'm gonna hit T for opacity and just turn the opacity down pretty significantly, maybe to something like about 6% and drop it below the eclipse, but above the stars. So now you can see our scene just has this extra texture applied to it. And go ahead and duplicate that dust layer and move it to the top. And we're gonna rename the dust layer clouds. And as you guessed, these are actually going to be clouds in our scene. So we're gonna to go to the transform options deselect uniform scaling and kind of turn up the width. So now you can see we have these just basically like stratus clouds in the sky and we can turn down the brightness to where they're just barely visible. And this just adds a little bit more to the overall realism in the scene. And you can just dial this in until it's perfect for you. And if you wanted to, you could select your pin tool here and just kind of cut out a shape. That's good for you. And that's pretty good for our scene. And so you can go to your mask options and just kind of feather out the edge just to make it look a little more organic and click away. So now we have clouds in the scene and you could even go to the opacity if you hit T and just kind of turn it up just a little bit so you can see these clouds just a little more clearly. And now it's time to animate our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle the switches and we're gonna set all of the layers to 3D except for the background layer, we want that to remain 2D. So let's go ahead and create a new camera, go to layer, new camera, and hit okay. And let's go to the stars layer, hit P for position, and we're just gonna push the stars back in 3D space pretty far, let's say about 5,000, then hit S for scale, and just go ahead and scale it up to where it kind of fills in the frame. So now our stars are just really far behind our moon here. And let's go ahead and set a keyframe at the very beginning. If you go to the camera, go to the transform options, set a keyframe for the position, move forward to the five second mark and just go ahead and push in just a little bit. So right about there. So now the composition just pushes in ever so slightly. And if you wanted to, you could set a keyframe for the Z rotation, scrub forward a little bit and just kind of rotate the Z just a little bit. Cool, so this is looking good, and one thing you may notice is that you're starting to see some black bars around the edges, but don't worry, that's super easy to fix. To fix that, just go to the each individual layers and hit Shift-Command-Y and change the height to 1920. So this is gonna make each of these layers square. So just hit Shift-Command-Y, go to the height, change it to 1920, hit Enter, 
And we can just do this over and over again for each one of our layers. And this will just even out the effect uh, to where there's no edges that look strange. Cool, so let's go ahead and preview this composition. Awesome, so as you can see, we've created a pretty cool time-lapse solar eclipse effect in only a matter of minutes. So you could even go in here if you wanted to, and we could create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and apply a curves effect. And go ahead and make maybe a kind of a contrasted S look. This is just going to add in a little more contrast into the scene just to give it a little more visual interest. And you could go to maybe the blue channel, maybe kind of crank it up just a little bit to give the whole scene just a little bit more of a blue look. And if you wanted to, one fun thing that I like doing is making the uh, blue curve kind of a, an S as well. And so that'll keep the highlights as a blue, but the shadows will remain kind of yellowish. And real quick, another fun thing that you could do is hit Command Y to create a new solid, and we'll call this one Overlay, hit OK, and apply a ramp effect. And we'll just go ahead and drop the ramp onto the overlay, and we'll set the color to be maybe about kind of a turquoisey blue, and the end color, we can make it maybe a little bit like a kind of a puke green, just like a gross color right about there and go to the toggle switches, set the transfer mode to overlay. And now you can see this is quickly added in some cool color effects. So if I hit W for the rotation tool, we can kind of rotate this layer, scale it up, stretch it out. And then we can adjust these start of ramp points here and go in and just kind of adjust it as you want. You could change the in color to maybe be, maybe not so green, maybe right about there. And this is just gonna go in and just kinda give the entire composition just a cool colorized look. All right, and that's all there is to it. If you wanna download the free project file, go over to my website at VFX City. And while you're there, go check out some of the other tutorials or download a few of the uh, free project files that I have on the site. Again, this has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.